In the next video, I'm going to show you why these are a no-no. All right, we got a little butter toast here and a round egg from the round skillet, the little tiny mini one. Threw some cheese on there and a little hot sauce, so that's going to be delicious. I have black coffee right here from Seattle's Best. They had a deal, a two-for deal at Kroger today. I was able to get these for $3.50 a bag. Whole bean, so I could grind it so it tastes great. Howdy everybody, we're going to look at a couple things I picked up at half price today. I'm going to show you a little phenomenon that was very common in the 80s with CDs. Every once in a while you still see it, uh, and it's something you need to address when you do see it. Let's look at this. So I picked up a little bundle here at half price today, some nice items. I'm going to show you this one in particular though. This is a, an opera or operetta by someone named, uh, the composer is Emmerich Kalman from Hungary. It's a two-disc set. This is on EMI. It's Grafen Maritza. I'm not sure at all about this. This is a pretty rare one to come across. I'm going to end up selling this because I don't really want to get into obscure operas. It takes too much time. And uh, this was two bucks marked down and I had a discount. Well, what's interesting about this is this inside of it. That yellow foam pad in there. Now, you want to remove this ASAP. First of all, before you buy anything that has one of these yellow pads in it, like that, you want to check the surface of this disc. Luckily, the surface of this disc was pristine. There was no damage to it. What happens with these? Back in the 80s with a lot of opera sets or double disc sets, the record companies were worried that the disc was going to slip out. So they put a little foam pad in here, which ostensibly is a good idea. However, the material they used for a lot of these was, uh, it's an oil-based deteriorating substance. And this breaks down. Sometimes these end up really, this is already rotting, but some of these really rot badly. And what they do is they rot on the disc. And what they do is they end up pitting the disc. They'll literally pull the surface plastic off and ruin your disc. So what you want to do when you see these is get these, get rid of these. Get those out, throw them out, and if you want to put another thing in here, you know, find bubble wrap or something that's not going to just deteriorate on you. I'm probably not going to put anything there. But this, uh, these oil things have been kind of the scourge of collectors for many years, and when you see these, you need to get rid of those ASAP. This one's still solid. Sometimes they're breaking apart. Uh, this was probably kept in a pretty good environment, and that's why it's not breaking down so badly that it affected the disc surface. I'm going to show you a disc that did, uh, did have a problem as a result of one of these. My sister bought this at an estate sale, and I luckily already owned this set. It's this set of uh, the Tchaikovsky 4, 5, and 6 symphonies by Yevgeny Ravinsky in the Leningrad Philharmonic on Deutsche Grammophon. This is a classic set. I already have it down here. I have a perfectly fine copy right here. I've had it for many years. It's a great set. It's kind of a must own if you have classical music at all, and especially Tchaikovsky. Um, she bought this, and this had one of those on on in the case. And look what happened. Look what happened to the label side of the disc. That's that pitting. It took the plastic off of there. And it's playable. It didn't go through to the other side or to the aluminum yet. But uh, I was able to arrest as much of the deterioration as possible on this. This, I'm considering this as an extra copy, even though it's a flawed copy in a sense, because, and for certainly it is not a sellable copy in this condition, but you can see the pitting that went on as a result of the rubbing against the friction and contact with this, you know, on this disc. So, but luckily I already owned that set, and I think she only paid maybe a dollar or two for this. And the other disc is fine. It did not suffer any damage. But that's what can happen when you run across these things. So, these foam inserts that were put in cases are a real problem for a lot of older discs. So, if you come across one of these, say in an opera set, check the surface. Luckily, this surface is fine. Uh, we got buy on this one, thank goodness, and I can sell this without any issues. Interestingly, it has that beveled full silver effect, and you don't see that on many discs, which is kind of cool. See that kind of beveling going on there? I don't know if you can see it, but it's not a typical 
disc construction, if you will. Uh, and those are kind of neat, but no reason for me to keep it. It's very nice. It's very nicely uh, kept, very, very good shape other than having this. So this is going right in the trash. We'll put this right in the trash here. And that goes in the garbage. So I got uh, the Court Jester, uh, 1956 classic comedy with Danny Kaye, widescreen in color. Angela Lansbury's also in it. Uh, one buck at half price books today. Very nice. I'm pretty sure I already own this. It has a famous quote in there. I think it's the pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle. That's how it goes. Um, and that's a tongue twister and it's hard to remember but anyway that's what you got to remember if you don't want to die uh you know drinking the wrong drink so uh give it give this a look sometime if you're just in for it this is kind of one of those holiday movies that they used to show on tv usually you know christmas time or whatnot and there's a lot of good memories associated with this danny k used to be on tv all the time like on cbs when i was a kid he had variety shows and he was just a, a really great kind of mimic comic, you know. He was very expressive, and he made a lot of good, great movies for Goldwyn back in the 40s in Technicolor. He was very popular during World War II and on TV. And, of course, he was in White Christmas, which is probably the most popular movie he was ever in by far. Uh, but he was really a big part of my childhood and uh, always loved the guy. And he's kind of forgotten now, which is sad, but, you know, the era of comedy that he comes from, kind of out of that vaudeville tradition, doesn't really exist anymore. But if you want to get a taste of that, this is a really good way to. So I got uh, some Schubert impromptus for a dollar here on Sony Classics with Andreas Hayflager. Andreas Hayflager. Don't really know much by this pianist, but it was a buck, and I look for things like that, so that's nice. I'm going to sell this. This is Britain's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra and Variations on the Theme of Frank Bridge and Simple Symphony on London ADRM. This is an earlier CD. It's a full silver CD made in Germany by Polygram. This will sell. And I already own this. I already, I've owned that for many years already, so that's no big deal. Got this Mozart Piano Concerto's disc with uh, pianist Justice Franz and conductor Klaus Peter Flohr with the Bomberg Symphony Orchestra on Eurodisc, which is kind of an RCA BMJ affiliated label from Europe. Uh, I don't have much by either of these guys. Anytime I see kind of a BMG with Klaus Peter Floor, I get it because they don't show up very often. That was a dollar. You know, now this is an interesting item. This has local interest. This is Gallup Palooza. Get it? Gallup because it's horses. Uh, there's a, this thing in Louisville where there's a bunch of horse statues, colorful horse statues, life-size, that are scattered around the county at various businesses. A business would pay for these, and they'd be installed in front of a business. It's kind of a nice local touch. And people kind of used to go do a Pokemon Go thing with these. they try to locate them and cross them off their list. It was kind of a little hobby around here for the last 20 years. Some of these horses are starting to... Uh, decay a little bit because they've been sitting out in the weather because that's what they do they just and they're these you see these all over louisville these horse statues it's kind of a nice feature of the town this is a beautiful book i bought this for my sister for christmas a few years ago and i just found another copy at the bookstore for two dollars i'm not going to keep it though i'm going to sell this because i just don't have room for this sort of thing but it is a nice local book